Hi everyone, this is William from the Headphone Experience. I'm here tonight with my first impressions of the iFi Audio Neo IDSD2. And I did review the original version of this a couple of years ago, but um, this thing has a lot of upgrades, a lot more features, and iFi is saying five times the power of the original version. So this, for, this was loaned to me by iFi Audio for review and it currently sells at $899 and that is in US dollars. It's a combination DAC amp and also has preamp functions. It has four digital inputs and one analog input. The four digital inputs are coax, optical, Bluetooth, and USB. And it has one 3.5 millimeter single-ended analog input on the rear. It also has a sync uh, connection on the back for connecting this to an external clock. It has four analog outputs, which would be RCA single-ended, XLR balanced on the rear, and a 6.3 millimeter headphone output on the front that is single-ended and a 4.4 millimeter balanced headphone output. It has GMT uh, precision femto clock. Uh, it has a uh, it has what's called X lossless Bluetooth. Uh, I find advertising this as the first. Uh, unit of its kind uh, to have to um, accept lossless Bluetooth and it also accepts PCM signals up to 768 kilohertz DSD up to 512 and um, it is a uh, MQA um, decoder compared as uh, opposed to an enabler which uh, the decoder actually unfolds the MQA not just plays it so anyway it uses a Burr Brown true native chipset which gives it a bit perfect uh, analog to digital or, or digital to analog conversion it has a signal to noise ratio according to iFi of 120 decibels and also a dynamic range of 120 decibels and here's the big difference compared to the original. The original had, I think, about one and a quarter watts per channel. iFi is claiming 5,551 milliwatts or slightly over 5.5 watts per channel into 32 ohms. So this thing has some serious power. Uh, this also, which the original version didn't have, this has the X space and X space that uh, came from the, uh, what do they call the, the old, um, I forget what that was called, the Zendek. Uh, the Zendek, Zen Amps, sorry, it took me a second to come up with that. They had the X space, which is basically a bass boost button, and the space, which gives you sort of a more speaker-like three-dimensional sound. And this does have both of those, which the original Neo didn't. Uh, this has four gain settings, which I don't think I've ever seen an amp with four options for gain, and all the way down for you know real low power for IEMs all the way up to the highest setting is powerful enough for the Hi-Fi Man Sesfara, which you can see in the photo behind me on the monitor I have been listening to this with the Sesfara, and it seems to have plenty of power as long as you use high gain and use a balanced output so you will need a 4.4 millimeter cable for your uh, Sesfara or uh, the other real hard to drive headphone is the Hi-Fi Man HE6 and I do have one of those. I haven't tried it with this yet, and, but I will before my full review. But I think the Susfire is actually slightly harder to drive because it's 60 ohms as opposed to 50 ohms. And uh, I think they both have the same sensitivity. So uh, this has four digital filter choices, which the original Neo only had the one. You couldn't switch it, and this you can cycle through four different options on your digital roll-off filter. It comes with uh, this little aluminum base here 
that allows you to stand it up vertically and uh, so that would put it in this position instead of laying down flat like this which is pretty cool because if you've got room for it you know height wise it really saves space on your desk or on your audio shelf or wherever you put it it does come with a remote control and the remote control uh, I think I have it here somewhere yeah it uh, activates most of the functions and it is made of aluminum which is pretty cool compared to most of your uh, stuff coming out right now has plastic remotes it also comes with a remote power supply a USB cable an RCA cable and a 3.5 to 6.3 millimeter headphone adapter and I do want to roll in and show uh, you a close-up of this and I apologize to those of you who watched my last video the review or first impressions of the tapping a70 Pro and D70 Pro. In that video, I actually forgot to show you a close-up view of the front and back of those. And I apologize. Uh, to be honest, I kind of struggled through that video. I had been working a lot in the days going up to that. I had to work the next morning and I was kind of tired. And it, um, to be honest, these videos, you really have to be in the right state of mind to do them. And that sometimes takes me a couple days to get into that. I'll plan on shooting a video and just don't feel mentally prepared for it, uh, sharp enough, because there's a lot of information to try to remember. And I do use some notes, but like I said, uh, you just I'm not always in the right state, state of mind to shoot one of these videos and I'm sure everyone that shoots videos understands that and knows what I'm talking about but anyway kind of struggled through that last video and I apologize if it was a little um, little hard to watch but it does, does have quite a few views though so anyway I'm gonna roll and give you a close-up of this and this unit it's not real big it's the exact same size as the old Neo and it has an aluminum case and a pretty thick aluminum front plate on it about probably a quarter inch thick not too heavy but it does feel solid and it feels well built uh, you got your volume knob here you've got your screen here which you can see in the background photo there it shows you your volume and your input uh, sampling rate and uh, your power setting on your gain and some other things. You've got your on off button here in the middle. It's also your select button when you go into the menu. And then you've got your X space button here, which gives you the expanded sound stage. Your gain switch down here, which you can toggle through your four gain settings. Then you've got your input selection up here, which you can toggle through your four, or is it five inputs? and uh, over here you have your X space button and you basically got four choice uh, X space ex something called expanse is it expanse yeah it's called expanse and then the next is X space and expanse and then off and then uh, here you've got your 6.3 millimeter single ended headphone output and your 4.4 millimeter balanced headphone output then on the rear, you have your preamp outputs, or you can use this as a dedicated DAC. And in the menu, if you're using it as a DAC, you set the output at fixed, or you can set it to preamp, and then you control the output of these outputs here on the back with your volume knob. So you've got your single-ended RCAs and your balanced uh, XLR outputs. Then this uh, first connection here is your sync for an external clock. And then you've got your coaxial input, your optical digital input, your USB. And then this here is your connection for your external power supply, which I believe is 12 volts DC. And um, it's got this part back corner of the unit that's plastic instead of aluminum that kind of glows and gives it a kind pretty cool look especially when it's standing up kind of just lights up it's not bright it's not annoying just kind of a glow on the back of the amp so anyway I'll get into uh, the sound of this but actually before I talk about the sound I do want to mention the equipment I've used so far 
And this is, excuse me just a second, let me get a drink. Even though it's been warm the last few weeks and I've been out mowing, a cold front came through and we have the heat on again. And the air is dry and uh, get dried out when I talk too much. So, excuse me if I have to take a drink or two during the video. So, um, I've used two different inputs for this. My Cambridge Audio CD transport into the uh, digital uh, coax input on it and then also I've used the USB digital input and my source was my uh, desktop computer that's running Windows 10 I'm using Windows Media Player and my music is CDs that were ripped to the Windows Music Player in WAV lossless format uh, the headphones I've used so far with this are the Hi-Fi Man HE 1000 SE and the Hi-Fi Man Susvara, which you can see in the photo behind me. And I've also tried it with the JM Audio XTC2. Uh, getting into the sound, I would describe the sound as somewhere between neutral and slightly on the warm side of neutral. I can't really say for sure yet until I do more extensive comparisons to other amp DAC combinations that I've known for a while and are more familiar with it. Uh, when I do my first impressions I used to not do any comparisons but I realized that that um, it's easy for my brain to adjust to a different sound and sometimes I don't pick up on something being different or off so I do now do some brief comparisons to equipment I know well before I do my first impressions but I do keep them very brief so in comparing this so far to a couple other units I would say the sound is neutral maybe slightly warm of neutral and I don't have the uh, original Neo that I reviewed a couple years ago to compare this to but I would say it's probably a little bit warmer than that that one was I would say neutral to maybe slightly on the cool kind of analytical side of neutral where I think this one is a little bit warmer um, the clarity and detail on this are outstanding. It is just perfectly clean. Uh, the sound stage, it's large, it's wide, has real good width. Um, it actually has pretty good depth and there's very good separation between all the instruments. Everything has its own location space. Nothing blurs together. The vocals, all the instruments all have their own you know you can pick out where every one of them is and you know no blurring together at all uh, the power I think I mentioned this already but when this is on high gain and you're using the balance output this thing actually does a very respectable job of running the Hi-Fi Man Susvara and as far as I know that's one of the hardest to drive headphones you can buy right now uh, the X-Space I like but only at lower volumes if I want to listen to it at a quiet volume it's it's pretty cool but at louder volumes to me it's a little bit too much boost I kind of, I wish uh, I if I would do that make an adjustable X space or you know an X space you could toggle through different amounts of boost because uh, most of the I if I amps that I reviewed I thought the uh, boost was too much I know on some of the earlier models like the original Zen can I've got sitting behind me it was a 12 decibel boost and that's just too much for me in most cases I I prefer more I would prefer maybe a 3 decibel or 6 decibel boost also depends on the headphones if a headphone is kind of bass light then I would be more up at like six but most headphones if I do want a little more bass you know depending on the music I'm listening to like say older classic rock that doesn't have a lot of bass weight you know um, you know then I like some bass boost but most of the time 90 I would say 98 percent of the time I listen to headphones with no tone adjustment no EQ but 
it is handy to have and I know a lot of people when the Neo came out weren't real happy that it didn't have the bass boost that the uh, Zen can and all that had so anyway uh, but it is fun to play with uh, the X space effect I found out already that has a can have a completely different effect on different headphones on the Sasvara it doesn't make a whole lot of difference it does change the sound slightly it makes the uh, sound stage sound a little different the mids a little bit more forward but on the uh, HE 1000 SE for some reason it makes them the mids and vocals sound kind of shouty so I didn't really like it with that headphone I don't think I tried it with the uh, JM Audio XTC2 but and I will try several other headphones with this before I come back with my full review and that is one of the things I will look into and see you know try different headphones and see what that X space and the X base what you know the level of change and if it's a good change or a bad change because I like I said on the HE1000 SE I didn't like the X space the expansion it just made it sound kind of weird so anyway uh, I think I mentioned it no I didn't mention this earlier I mentioned that you can use the plate the base here to stand this up vertically but what I didn't mention is the display automatically rotates as you rotate the amp you don't have to go into the menu you don't have to push any buttons when it's this way you can read the display upright when you turn stand it up on end the display rotates 90 degrees and you can read it so very cool feature the original Neo did that also but I did want to mention that they have that on this so um, the only thing I've really compared this to at all so far and it was a very brief comparison was the topping A70 Pro and D70 Pro Saber stack which I got in maybe a week before this and I did my full review uh, or my first impressions of that a few days ago actually I did it about a week ago and I was working so much I didn't get a chance to actually load it and publish it for about three days but and this is slightly lower in cost I think the two of those the stack comes to about twelve or thirteen hundred dollars and this is eight ninety nine uh... the topping has a little bit more power output but uh... this seems to do fine with the Sasvara so i think this is adequate and the two actually in my very brief comparison actually have a similar sound they have a similar tone balance both warm to or i would say neutral to slightly on the warm side of neutral both very very clean and i'm sure there are differences in the sound and that's what i'll try to determine when i do my full review i'll do more extensive comparison and try to tell you exactly what the differences are between this and the topping stack but right now i would say they're actually pretty close in sound um, I just got the a few days ago the Hi-Fi Man Serenade in which is a combination DAC and amp that sells for $999 only $100 more than this it's bigger heavier has less features but beautiful sound and I did very briefly compare this to that and I would say the Hi-Fi Man's a little bit warmer um, probably equal amount of detail but like I said this does have a lot more features and that'll be one of the uh, extensive comparisons I do before I come back with my full review excuse me a second again <clears throat> so anyway um, and once again compared to the original Neo uh, this has like five times the power. The original Hi-Fi Neo actually it did a respectable job with the Hi-Fi Man Sisvara, but couldn't take it all the way. It struggled a little bit if you tried to get into louder volumes. It average listening. It did fine with the Sisvara and other easier to drive planar magnetic headphones, but it struggled with things that were harder to drive. I didn't have the Sisvara. Um, did I say Susvara a minute ago? If I did, I meant Sundara. 
<clears throat> sci-fi man names are all kind of similar. Anyway, um, the original Neo was decent with the Hi-Fi Man Sandara, but struggled a little at louder volumes. This has five times the power. That one only had one gain setting, I believe. I'm trying to remember two years back. This one has four gain settings, so this should be able to adapt to just about any headphone. So this thing has some pretty serious power. This also has the X-Space and X-Space that the original Neo uh, didn't have and what else the game control just a lot of features it looks similar the only difference is the four buttons here or five buttons here and the original I think had two so anyway I will get back to you in about a month with my full review might be longer than that I've got a ton of equipment in right now that I need to get reviews out on and offers for more equipment actually so I've actually had to ask a few people to hold off a little bit because I am coming into my busy season with lawn care and unfortunately I still have to work a full-time job I wish I could be a full-time reviewer but the $80 or so a month I'm making for from uh, YouTube isn't gonna pay my bills so I've still got to go out and work every day so Anyway, I will try to be back in about a month with a full review and re use more headphones, compare this to more amps and DAX, and uh, give you more details and let you know what I think of this. But so far, I'm really liking it. I really, It's a really high quality unit, and it pretty much does everything I need it to do. And has enough power for any headphone that I have. And... Um, when that when your list includes a Susvara, that covers just about any headphone. I haven't tried this yet with IEMs, but I'm sure on the lower gain settings it will work fine. I'm confident of that. So I'll be back in about a month. Um, if this video helped you, please give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the Headphone Experience on Facebook already, uh, you're all welcome to join over there and. Once again, thanks for watching my video.